Hey guys, G. Choi here of the House of Black Side and Full of Fighting System. Hopefully everybody's doing well. So, um, I posted the picture of the sp sparring bufflers that I made for our practice for the upcoming seminar, the Declassified. But it looks like I know that many of my friends and our brothers in the arts actually do practice a system called the Pipe Piper Knife system or piper system and their blade actually is uh, I know when you look at uh, shout out to my brothers uh, Guru J. Fujimoto in Hawaii and also Guru Dean Franco and my teacher of course Master Ray Mcfloro. How are you gentlemen? Hopefully you guys have a great weekend. I know you guys like to use the okapi or the kudu for your training and this is pretty much about the same size. Now as I posted, I got the idea from one of my students uh, that recently trained with me and he actually works for the three letter agencies. And he also practices an art or system called the Liber or Libre or, I do apologize if I'm butchering, but I'm not really <laughs> too keen with that kind of English. But long story short, he showed me the training sparring buffer that he used with his practice, and that's where I got the idea along with copying Kelly McCann's uh, sparring trainer. Shout out to Kelly McCann, I love you, sir. And basically combining those two together to create this. Now, Mr. McCann's trainer, he leaves the uh, center of this just as is, but what I've done on mine, on these trainers, uh, but first is that I've just basically rolled the buffer to actually make it more condensed. Now, beauty, beauty about these guys is that one, you can use it for sparring without much protective equipment, minus I say maybe uh, eye protection. You should get stabbed someone in the face with this, but with the eye, I honestly do not want to get hit with this one or anything. As a matter of fact, so it's cheap. It's affordable, it's easy, and best of all, you can arm the entire students in a seminar with one of these and have a blast sparring. And best of all, it works. I mean, you can stab without worrying about somebody getting hurt. When we typically spar in four or five systems, we utilize the sparring buffers. Now, these have a PVC or a PEX pipe core. So even with the padding, it can still do some significant damage. I mean, I've actually had one of my students pretty severely hurt using one of these in the past. And we use fencing masks and hockey gloves. These, you don't have to worry about that because it actually the injury is literally almost none. And you don't have to have them suit up or bring any specialized equipment. And because of the cost, you can simply hand them out at the seminar without, or those of us who are instructors worrying about too much about financial cost of this. So enough of me talking, let me show you how to make this. So I made enough of these kudu size or copy size ones. So I'm gonna actually make some, this is gonna be about the size of my trusty Wartac folding knife. So they're gonna be about this size here. I'll make one already. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna put them side by side and see what the length of it is. Make a note of that. Then grabbing your trusty knife for the work. In my case that will be my shot knife, the Kulu. And I'm just gonna roll and cut that. That's it. All right, so after you cut it, you got it right here. I'm just gonna put this aside for a second. And then, now these are pipe insulation foams, so they'll come with kind of semi-cut on the top so you can split that. And now you gotta split inside. And all you want to do, you're gonna roll this. That's it. Now after you rolled it, to make sure there isn't any rooms for spares and stuff, get it tight. And so I'm just gonna use uh, E-tape. This is where the electric tape. Now the gentleman who 
came to stream recently, he actually uh, in Libra or Libre fighting, they actually used uh, E-Take for everything. Uh, personally, I don't recommend that for the following reason. E-Take, when you actually pack them up like that, the edges can actually still cut to a degree on certain areas, thus leaving you burns. This is the reason why it's really good for handle material though, so that's what I'm using it for. And you're just going to compact that. Now, this is going to be the handle, so make sure you get it tight. Just going to go around. Nothing fancy, just sandwiching the sieve like so. Got grip it to make sure you can, yeah, and just get the handle part done. Next is the top section, and before you do wrapping on this with the cold flex tape, you should get them from your local veterinary stores. Um, because this is used a lot as a cold flex uh, flexible bandage, it's used for like horses and when you're fur babies have a boo-boo and they actually type tape it up so they don't lick it to death, you know what I mean? So this works like that, but sandwich it like so. Now this is what Kelly McCann does and I really liked it. So he kind of makes to make a tip, so come towards that. I'm just gonna make a tip out of it. So while I'm, as I'm doing this, let me talk to you guys about Kudu a bit. I work with several copies, like customizing, customizing them, and they are great, but they require a lot of work before you actually put them to work. Kudu doesn't; it just comes straight out of the box, razor, and it works great for pretty much everything. So I really like using that, and that, and my current supply of a copy, and my brother who actually hooked me up with these. Uh, He's currently somewhere in Ukraine. Mike Clements, this is your cup of Draconis. If you're still alive and kicking, fucking give me a call, all right? Love you, brother. Stay alive. So, uh, Mike's uh, one of my best students. Uh, he went over, he was in Africa doing, I'd say he was trying to do some soul searching, but while doing that, one thing led to the next. Uh, he went to Qatar, to Qatar, to help people out in the evacuation on certain areas, humanitarian work mainly. Then, when he heard the calling, dumb moron went over to Ukraine to try to help, and I haven't heard back from him since. So, Mike, if you're watching this, just send me word that you're still alive and kicking, bro. Uh, you got brothers here still fit waiting to hear back from you to make sure you're still alive and well. That's all we care about. Everybody does what their heart's intent, whatever the calling that the Lord sends them. Sometimes they send us in a harm's way more often than not. All right, so with the cold flex tape, you want to make sure you got the top portion for the kisaki or the tip. So, you don't get any sharp edges. Very important, make sure you don't have any sharp edges when you do this on the bandage either. Now, because the cold flex is slightly longer on the hand, on the blade side, I'm just gonna trim it down a little bit. So I'm gonna about, use about this length. And I'm just gonna cut it. First. And then, Cut around one inch on the side to make sure that I can first see that yep, it's about an inch. Cutting an inch. So while I'm doing this, I do anytime when I'm working, especially when I got a client that I have to do some 
stippling on a custom handgun or whatever. You know, having a good conversation when someone to talk to is good. So we also talk about a lot of different subjects. Now I find it fascinating that there's so many different blade arts out there and there's I'm a firm believer now, I'm at an age where, especially since I've been in the field for an extended period of time when it comes to martial arts, I'm a firm believer that there is no such thing as one perfect art that does everything. Well, maybe for the fighting systems. <laughs> Sorry, I'm biased. But, I'm a firm believer that truth is one, yet many are its paths. You dedicate yourself to the art. You practice diligently, and eventually we all reach the same summit of mastery and enlightenment as our teachers we strive to be. So that is my thought of the matter, and my friends, that's it. You're completed. It's a very simple sparring trainer that you can use for pretty much everything. Um, I got some students ask me, Gee, why are you making two? I mean, is there something that we should be worried about? Uh, no, that's not it. Reason is, we've got one, obviously, that's going to be used for the seven. Are we going to do two parts? And I do have some students who are asking me regarding the, my FFS students, regarding FFS underhand method and especially with the current financial times it's hard to get any super good plates that cost a lot so this is one of many reasons why I suggest the kudu a lot to a lot of my students and they're when they look at me all weird saying what can this little knife do and I said FFS underhand and I'm like what my FFS students couldn't believe me I told them if I had an option between certain different blades and if I especially if I'm gonna be traveling they ask me what would you care and I said Okapi and they look at me all weird and said why and I said well for Okapi I could do a lot of things I could still teach FFS reverse grip knife even with an Okapi I could actually pull it off as long as I personally tested the lock myself two FFS underhand knife works like a charm with Okapi or Kudu because one, you're using the blade to cut, thrust, and when you thrust this way, the tip perfectly angles for that thrust into the kidneys. So on that many note, I really do like this. So any of my students who ask me, like, gee, what's a good blade for a budget? I said, oh, copy. When you could, though, grab a kudu. Not kudu, grab a copy, but when you can't, oh, copies or kudus, God damn, I'm getting your names or something. Kudus will do just fine. Whether you practice the FFS or if you are like my good friends on Facebook doing the whole the Piper method, which is interesting. Uh, it'll work, and these here will work great for what you do. The trainer itself, um, the, the spine buffers they'll do just fine. It's great especially if you don't want to use a lot of protective equipment. Minus maybe as I said earlier eye protection so everybody's staying safe but there's a lot of benefits of sparring with just minimal equipment uh, such as that. One, realism uh, pretty much is another level to it. Two, without the restriction of protective equipment uh, students actually do develop heightened senses and accelerate the learning curve to a whole new level, especially when there's something like this play, put into effect. Now, reason why for the different coloring is we as human beings in how our eye focus a target of certain shape and colors actually is evident. One of many reasons why now I'm a firearms instructor, so a gunsmith, so I do this quite a bit. When I have folks who come to me and ask, hey gee, I'm now passing my 70s and I have a really hard time focusing with my sight. And they'll typically show me with a tritium sight from treasure card or something. And they ask me, okay, how can I get decent shots on there and I don't have a lot to spend? 
front fiber optic and rear naked sight, sir. Say what? Blacken out the rear sight and on the front put a fiber optic front on it, like a red. Reason red versus green is an individual preference, but my personal reason why I would recommend red over green is I live in the Pacific Northwest, there's a lot of greenery everywhere. You try to put green on green and you're going to have a one hell of a annoying time trying to focus. When you have red, which is an alienated color on a green, you have a much better time to focus on the target, especially if you shoot like you should and have your marksman shook down, you should be able to land your shot where you aim. And night fighting is no different either. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Uh, my dear friends and my brothers in arms, stay sharp, be safe, train hard.